This is it. Usually we start with the yearlings. We're going to end with the yearlings. Today the biggest list we have right now are yearlings, AC Swan and Alibaba. Both have to return from Illinois. I know I say that every week. We have not got them yet. We will. I said. I think I actually said I'd get them this week with the weather and everything going on in Christmas. Trying to get stalls opened up. We thought we had some opening up and then we had to wait another week. So when we get the green light for the extra stalls at Northfield Park, we will populate them quickly. And Alibaba, AC Swan, and Per Lucky will be the first three. Will Per Lucky stay there? I don't know. I'm thinking maybe the Meadows, but we'll see what plays out with Locatelli and are our horses going to get in here? Who are we going to have going? Lots to discuss, but we I suspect we will have an open trotter with Tim Twaddle. And it'd be nice to have an open pacer there also throughout the winter. We'll see how that plays out. Activation was incredible. Both him and Affection. I'll, I'll, be, I'll get to Affection in a minute. Activation looked very, very good. And somebody said, I, I don't know why you're surprised he's good. Well, I understand he was a day one horse, but he was a buyback from Diamond Creek for 35 in which they sold us for 25 the next day I believe so yes although he was a day one horse my expectations were tempered of um of activation but he looks very very good on the track now affection pay attention affection was uh an on gate purchase I was the underbidder and genre cross was the was one of our clients and bought the horse. I saw the name come up. I sent her a message. I said, John, you know, do you want to, you know, sorry, first off, that I ran you up because um, it was just her and I bidding from like 12 or 13. I think she went for 17 or 18,000. Man, uh, the way she looked the first week we broke her, oh my God, w stopped on the track, wouldn't go forward, just very rude and ignorant. And I I'm thinking to myself, Man, I don't know, but this thing, is she going to be all right or not? I have no idea. And um, uh, she made a break on Brody the other day. Said, I'll go with that filly. Changed her gear, changed her equipment a little bit, added bell boots. I told you guys how good insider trading was that nobody wanted any part of insider trading. This one might. I trained this filly actually in 243. Now, she was bought a little bit before um, Lexington. So she has had a little bit of work into her. I can't believe how she's transformed from that rude, ignorant horse that we broke to a filly with her ears up, and I, I could have went lots more with this filly. I don't know, you know, insider trading, two different countries, two different tracks, two different times they were purchased. These are the two top of the class. Funny, one's a Father Patrick, and one is by a son of Father Patrick in Green Chew. Philly was very, and you guys saw her on open house day. All the shares were gone by the end of the, by the end of the, um, by the end of the open house, because Chris Lems went with her, and she was great. She was even better the other day. Alibaba, as I said, will be coming back as soon as we get the stall, uh, as soon as we get the stall situation cleared up in the coming coming weeks. Week. Uh, Antilles Hanover. I love, the international money's got great attitudes. This guy looked awesome training again the other day. Very very happy with Antilles Hanover. Arson Jason loves Merriman and McGinnis. Both love this colt and say that uh, you know Jason McGinnis always wants to go with them. He didn't go with them the other day. I don't think. Maybe he did. Maybe he did go with them again. He's very, very nice. Call. I said no. Is it shocking? He's a three-quarter brother to Pure Country, and Charleston, by the way. Uh, so Arson looks good. Blanton's Blue looks good again. This is Mombasita's brother. Number of people asking me if there's any shares going to be any shares for sale on our auction coming up for Blanton's Blue. I don't know. There may be. There may not be. We will see. Uh, Cherahola trained good with the hobbles on. Got to put a lot of work, a lot of meat, a lot of muscle on this filly. She is going to be. Uh, more than just work on the track and be working the barn. I want to see her start putting some weight on. She's not skinny, but I can see what's going to take place here. Uh, she reminds me, I've used this horse's name a little bit because this is a horse that went, came very from a very questionable uh, training regiment, I guess, throughout the winter. He missed some time. He was always working. We always worked him hard, but he needed the hobbles tight and everything had to be right. And then he just got better and better and better and turned into such a nice horse. And his name was also Pine Cherahola fits that type of category cowboy by the sea was awesome the other day you know here's a horse the track was a little harder the other day he was much better every time the track's a little deep he's going to struggle with the flip-flops on but as i said to somebody i don't care let him struggle a little bit if he wants to i want to make sure he stays comfortable and he stays sound and he'll do that for now with the flip-flops on and it's not that he has any issues but i just don't want anything bubbling up you know we made a little change this year rather than being a little reactive with the shoeing, we were what I would call proactive with the shoeing. For the most part, we put 
uh, flip flops on almost all of our horses because I don't think they need that speed. But we can put lots of speed into them. We don't need to have them on their toes all spring and all, all heading into the summertime. There'll be a time come May when we will put a lot, most of the flip flops will go away. Full swedges will go on most of the horses. We'll drop the hammer and then we'll see how that plays out throughout the summer. But for right now, the vast majority of our horses have flip flops on. Uh, don't don't talk about Bruno looks good. You know, he doesn't have any of the bad qualities of his brothers, either Macho or Crantini, that throw in their head and being rude and not paying attention. He actually looks quite attentive and do and happy to do his work. So we'll see how Bruno plays out. Drebin is a Walner Colt that we bought. Looks nice on the track. Very happy with what I've seen from Drebin, Drebin this far. Easy on the turns. Very impressive to watch. Very, very nice filly. Slick. Very slick gated filly. And I like everything I've seen from her. Electric line. I like this Colt too. The leather ups. We have two leather ups. I very, very much like, which I'm happy because Capistrano right now is in full to lather up. We have two. They're both awesome so far. And uh, Electric Line, very, very happy with this guy. Flashfly, she's a goofy green shoe. She is, but a lovable horse. And I very, very much like what she's done on the track. Made breaks, been green. She couldn't go any faster than 255 the other day. I had her right almost to the red line, letting her trot along and be comfortable. I didn't want to push her out of her comfort zone. I didn't have to. She trotted away from the horses and looked good. That's why I want to see her go all the way down through the spring. Keep her contained. I don't want her getting mentally or physically pushed beyond the limits and very happy with what I've seen from all the green shoes now, now that i got a handle on them. Rude, ignorant to break. Get that rust and that ignorance polished off right away they actually turned into nice horses very happy with all the green shoes we have especially flash fly george of the jungle looked good the other day made a few little equipment adjustments with him uh, mario said he was much better gold bug hanover has been very very good in ohio and she was the queen she was the most ignorant stubborn animal we broke all year and almost immediately within two weeks turned into a nice horse now now she's starting to do her work very well and liking it very happy with what I've seen from Goldbug Hanover. Great bet. Looks good. This is the all bets off brother to greatest ending. Very happy with him also. You'll see me here. Somebody say, oh, you can't be happy with all of them. Why wouldn't I be happy with all of them? It's December. If I'm not happy with them in December, it's a problem, right? Why wouldn't I be happy? They have some injuries or they're, they're a little bit behind or they're just not doing their work. We don't have any of those so far. So I've been... Where is Ollie going? Oh, he's going to give him a present. So I've been very, very happy with what I've seen from... Uh, great bet and these other horses also green tea little again the the green shoes were tough to break this guy would not trot couldn't trot a flat lap when we first got him going uh, I loved having the conversation with Dr. Rucker the other day about him since then I worked him real real hard about two weeks ago in, in, a, in an afternoon training session and he was very tired afterwards when I saw him a week later now they jogged him and worked on him we made some minor adjustments but the next time I went with him he trotted the whole way the whole mile looked very very good and then I went with him the other day, again, trotted the whole mile, looked good, but his ears up. Started to understand, okay, I can do this. I am actually not bad at it. And a very likable horse now. I'm very happy with what I, the transformation of these green shoes was quick, very, very quick. And I'm very happy with what I've seen from all of them. Gypsy Hill has just been one of our top horses. Very nice colt here. Uh, I like what I see heading into the spring. Now, last year, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, oblivious to the fact that I said we have six very nice trotting fillies. We ended up with one really nice trotting filly and five very suspect fillies. Two or three of them maybe into the into the Buckeye, which are the grassroots. And there were a couple of them that were terrible. Um, uh, the filly with the white face there. Yeah, I'll get to it. Anyway, uh, there's not much I can do about that. I told you the Colts were all kind of okay last year. And they turned out to be okay. I mean, either okay or gone last year. This year... I'm very happy with the mix we have, both on the pacing side, too. Got some power on the pacing side thus far. Trotters, I can name three good Phillies, three good Colts right now, minimum, in Ohio. I think, once again, we're going to have a lot of fun in Ohio in 2023. Hallie in the Clouds, muscle mass Philly, doing her work well. Made a couple of breaks the other day. Was doing her work well. Made a couple of breaks. We added some weight. We were going to train today, but it was minus 10 million, so we couldn't do that. Um, I'm Fancy Like was sour. Now, we have two dancing Yankees. I didn't like the way either of them were behaving. The Colt was gelded, but they have that rough exterior to them. And even more than the green shoes, it was more like, stay away from me. And on the track, don't bother me. You know, I, I, I kind of, I, I was, uh, we worked both the dancing Yankees very hard this week. Uh, we had an open bridle on I'm Fancy Like, which 
only accentuated her, her, her disdain for what we were trying to make her do. And once we switched her back to a closed route, she did her work in the open. I'll give her that. But once we got her back to the close, she won her training set the other day and looked rather good doing it. So steps forward for her. So I'm happy to, happy to report that insider trading. Love this Philly. This is, as I said, maybe affection, but they're not going to, they're not going to lock horns until maybe ever later in the year, maybe in the finals, hopefully. But, uh, from the, the fact that they're both coming from the stable, regardless of who the trainer is, who has them, whether it's Tim or, or Mark or Megan or whoever who has these horses in Pennsylvania throughout the summer, they are owned by the stable. So they won't probably lock horns until the end of the year. Uh, and that's assuming, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. That's assuming they get to the races. They do well, but preliminary reports, I can tell you right now, those are the two top trotting fillies we have in our barns right now, that could change quite easily. As I said, Merchant Man was the best horse we had last year this time into January. So lots can change, but insider trading affection, just a little bit ahead of everybody right now. International Spy, he looks the part. He is the best looking horse we have. Great attitude, good breeding, nice colt. Got high hopes for this guy. Uh, you know, he's not top of the class yet. Very dumb, as Jane said, very green, very dumb. James said, might be the dumbest horse we have, but he is the most beautiful animal we have. Correct. For sure on one count, probably both. <laughs> International, International uh, in, uh, Irresistible Sun. Sorry, Irresistible Sun. Looked good the other day. We finally put the hobbles on him. He looked very good training. J-Port Beach Boy really turned the corner quick on this guy. James said he was very good the other day. I like Levesque in action. She needs 80 to 100 pounds of muscle put on her as she transitions and trains throughout the spring. She's a little too frail and streamlined to be doing the work that we're going to ask her to do over the next two months. So we're going to ask her to put some weight on. A um, little extra feeding maybe added in the mid-morning to her. Lots of hay. We want to put some muscle on this filly. I like what I saw the other day from her, but she is going to need more weight. Um, Lonely Lakewood looks incredible. These Father Patricks, they can be they can be dream crushers, but at the same time, I like what I've seen from this guy and a lot of these horses. They seem to do their work properly. I'm watching those years. And the reason we're gelding memory and imagination, he reminds me a lot of Enzo, where they just kind of pin... Their first inclination is get away. The second inclination is fine. If you're going to make me do it, I'll do it. I want the first inclination to be, I can do it better than the horses around me. Let me show you. And I, I can't make them do that. I gave Enzo a long leash last year, maybe too long. Maybe that was on me, but that's not going to happen with memory and imagination. He'll be castrated. He's third, third, born to down, uh, third and six, absolutely first born to dance. Absolutely. Second memory and imagination is third up for the scalpel in the new year. Uh, Lover's Play was great. I didn't didn't get to go with this filly much. Looked like she was pulling up and acting up on Amy. And then Scott went with her last two. She was amazing. Thumped them the other day and made them like it and looked very, very good. I, this is a filly where everybody that's gone with her or could, gone, or could go with her has said the same thing. Has said the same. Jenna has got the same car as me. A copycat. Huh. Um... Uh, where are we at here? Lover's Play. I never knew much about this filly. We bought her. She fit into what we were doing. A lot like Austral Hanover did last year. If you would have asked me right after we bought Austral Hanover, why'd you buy that horse? What did you like about him? I don't know. I gave him high marks. I liked the horse, but I couldn't really tell you why, other than financially, it made sense to buy him. This filly was the same. She just fit into what we were trying to do. Pedigree, markings. I had her priced, I think, at 38 and gave 20 some for. I thought she was a, a good purchase for us. And that's why we have um, that's why we have Lover's Play. Mick Paisley continues to look good. Another horse, flip-flops. She struggles a bit in the flip-flops, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Melanie's Michaela is getting better. She was good the other day training again. Mel Gibswan. A uh, very inexpensive horse. Tell me if you've heard this story before. A very inexpensive swan for all that we took out of the sale. I'm going to say two different sales. Um, that people weren't really paying attention to, but a very good looking animal. I'm not going to draw conclusions to the first swan for all we did that to. But this guy, and this guy was not my pick. I will tell you right now, this was Amy's top pick. I sent Amy over to look at Swandre the Giant's brother. She said, I like him but there's another horse they're selling is a much better individual. I said, okay. Uh, I think I was the underbidder on Swandre's brother. I didn't love him. I liked him. 
I didn't love them. I thought that was plenty. I think it was 28 or 30, somewhere around there. Mel Gibson came in the ring. He was 10. We bought him. Everybody that sat behind this horse can't wait to tell me how much they love him. So take that for what it is. Memory and imagination was very good as last training trips, but he will be castrated first of the year. Militant. There's no more. He's a very nice horse. Very well bred. I have high expectations for this horse. He will be castrated. Militant was very good the last two times we went with the mounds for all. They said, he's sour and he doesn't want to do his work. No, he's just lazy. Just a lazy horse. Just don't bother him. Let him get stronger. He'll do it. I've seen horses like this guy. Keep him covered. This is a James horse. This horse should be here with James. Keep him. Train him. Never leave a helmet until he absolutely is begging you to move. Then you let him start doing his work. That is how mounds for all needs to go. I know Daryl went with him a couple of times first over. He said, no, 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 no. No more first over. Helmets. Lots of helmets. And move him. I like him. Trots beautifully. And he is not sour. He is a little lazy. He's not sour. Um, myself and this bar, we have him home now. We're going to start working with him. I'll give you a better update. I can tell you this. The vet didn't find anything wrong with him. So that's good. It's good and it's bad. Because we don't have something to work on. We have everything to work on. Instead of having one area or two areas to focus on, now we're back to step back. It's the entire horse. So we'll probably, I'll be completely frank with you, we'll probably pour a lot of work into this colt and a lot of training into him. And as I said, he's an athlete. He's going to have to come around on his own, and I think he will. There's no reason he can't. So we'll see what we can do over the next two, three weeks here in Ontario, focusing very closely on myself and this bar from here on in. No chance in he'll get up and beat everybody the other day with Brody. I'm glad because, you know, Brody's a young kid. I like to see him go with horses he gets along well with. This guy seems to like Brody, and Brody seems to like him. So he's going to get a lot of mounts on no chance in Hill for the next little while. Oh, snap you. This filly is one of our top Ohio breads thus far. Another horse. Now, Amy picked her out. So did I. This is one of the rare horses where we both said at the same time, have to have this horse. This is a horse we both liked. We priced her almost bang on. We might have got a little tiny discount on her. I really, really, really like Oh Snap You, and Amy loves her. Uh, Paycheck Princess is going well, too. I don't think you're going to hurt yourself with this filly. She's got a beautiful gait, and she is wiry and strong. Make some breaks down the lane. The flip-flops, again, probably play a role. We're not changing for a while. They're going to be on her. So I told them, put bell boots on her and bandages behind. She might be cross-firing a bit, but we're not changing for a bit with her. Pickpocket looks great. Another Walmart. We have two. Very, both of them were very inexpensive. Both of them look very, very good from what I can see. Very happy with Pickpocket. Prince Charmer still to this day. Yeah, he hit his knee the other day and it blew up. I don't really know why. I think it was a freak thing because I didn't really peg him when I went with him as a horse that would get into his knees. You'll see those horses that are narrow and they just kind of, once in a while they might brush up into their knees, baby. Maybe you might see them do that, but the ones that come right out of knee... Drebin looks like if we keep him shod properly, keep the proper equipment on him, we keep him from coming at his knee or maybe get him get him over his knee into that arm area where there's a lot more room to miss. But that would be a horse you'd say, okay, you got to watch that horse for getting into his knee. we to keep him shod properly, keep the equipment on him. Prince Charmer doesn't strike me as that. Yeah, he's a little narrow. He might brush his knees, but he's never going to maul his knee. It looks like he might have just caught it in a weird place and it blew up a little bit. So I said to him, I said, we can wear knee boots on him, but this horse is not what I would call a knee knocker. Not at all. So an odd thing, but Prince Charmer, I, I like this horse. I still can't believe we got him for what we got him for. I love him. And is he going to stay a stud? I don't know. We might geld him at some point, but there's no reason to just yet. Um, pull the shoes looks fantastic. Another one of these green shoes. I love these horses. If I had known, I said this before, if I had known that Harrisburg was going to be, and I know what happened. I didn't believe it when they told me, but I know what happened now. A lot of these people bought the green shoes in Lexington, and they were all high-priced, got them home, and they were complete lunatics to break, like complete renegades. Then they got to Harrisburg like, no, no, I'm good. I'll buy something else. Had I known that that was the case, I would have just backed the trailer up and bought as many green shoes as I could. Green Shoe is a very well-bred horse, was a world champion, and a dominant figure in his division. There is no reason that I can imagine that Green Shoe isn't going to be a good sire. I wish I had bought more. Where are we at here? Punch the clock, uh, our Christmas miracle. I don't need any Christmas gifts. None. I already got one. This filly here, to see her go from death and it was as close as you're going to get, any living animal. Death to climbing out of a grave, becoming healthy and looking as shiny and happy as she is. Man, she looks very, very good. This is the, the sister to King of the North, and a horse that we 
pegged most of what we did right in 2022 and tried to roll it into 2023. This was, we yes, time is on my side, was expensive. We bought some very expensive, very deep horses pedigree-wise, but this was the crown jewel. This was it. This was our work. And and to have this transpire over over a weekend and into a week, it was so gut wrenching to watch happen. You you've no idea. And for her to come back and look, she's close to starting jogging again. As soon as those as soon as that incision site looks good, I'm gonna have the surgeon Natalie Cote said, Yes, I'll come to your barn, look at her, give you the green light. Um, she's days, if not weeks away from, if not a week away from starting to jog. She's been on the walker, having fun playing in the barn again. Very lucky. As I said, Christmas miracle for us is this filly. Um, I, I guess come the summer when she starts racing, we can all reminisce and talk about the time that it almost happened. But for me, very, very fortunate to have this filly with us. Uh, purple people eaters look great. This is Purple Aura's sister. We have her sister and her aunt, and both are top of the class in our barn right now. Ready for landing. He was a little over on the shaft a little bit, on the line a little bit, making breaks big, growthy colt. I asked him to make a little shoeing change uh, to him behind. We put some egg bars on him behind. We're going to continue to tinker with him and get him right, but I'm very, very happy with what I've seen from Ready for Landing. I, I, I can't wait to, to see this guy train down. He, he's almost a twin physically of Carter Michael Deal. Almost a twin physically. No relation in any way, shape, or form. But very, very similar in their, their mannerments on the track. Their gait, everything. Uh, really don't care. This filly again. Beautiful filly. I love this filly. I actually had somebody from Europe call us, uh, message me about, about um, Goldbug Hanover and uh, Ready for Landing. Or, uh, sorry, really don't care. And I didn't want to sell either of them. I mean, I thought they were tremendous purchases. And the fact that people are already reaching out to us about buying them off us only echoes that. Um, I like this filly. I like everything about her. I can't wait to see these green shoes trained down. Cool. Um, Rito's Lady. Haven't got her gated yet. Really just been jogging her. She's a bit of a cow in the barn. Kicks the walls and bites at people. But she's getting better. The other day when we first got her, and I'll tell you why. Because she came from a really small place where nobody bothered her. She had her own time alone. There wasn't a group of ton of horses around. Totally different. These horses act totally different now. Jonathan did a tremendous job raising her. She looks amazing. But needs to be in that herd. Right? Needs to be in that group of horses. And um, I like what I've seen. She has changed quite a bit. She doesn't kick the walls as much. She's not biting at people anymore. She'll come over the gate and let you pet her. But when we first got her, hoo -hoo. I like her though. She's nice. Let me see how she looks when we get her gated up. Royal Emeralds, another green shoe, doing her work perfectly. Looked great the other day. Seasons of love. We will get the weight back on her. We'll get the shoes back on her. And she will I suspect she'll come forward again the way she was before we had to kind of change her shoes and tinker with her. Sedona Hill, that is Purple Aura's aunt. One of the best fillies we have under our roof, so to speak, under our umbrella. She is very, very nice. Uh, Southwind Digit, I love this filly. This is a bar hop. Only bar hopping we got, I believe. Um, very happy. I went with her the last two times she went. She looked good. Uh, Sunset Acres girl. Somebody said, oh, are you going to stop making fun of her? How can I stop making fun of her? I still don't know her breeding. I don't know her lineage. I'm going to have to sign her up to Ancestry.com just to find out if she's actually an equine horse. <laughs> Tell you what she did. Thump the piss out of them. Excuse my French. Thump the piss out of them the other day training. I don't know. can't remember which four or five were in there, but they didn't want a part, any part of Sunset Acres girl. I know that the final went 2-7-2 and two last year. This filly... You know, you can't extrapolate, but you can look at gait, speed, athleticism and say, that's a nice filly. So I'm going to have to look here. She is by Sunset Acres Banker out of Dolce Far Niente, whatever the hell that is. And uh, very nice horse. Sweeney looked good the other day. I went and trained Sweeney in 249. Had to make a few little changes with Sweeney. Still very green, very immature, but I was very, very happy with what I saw from him. He was mature enough to go his mile by himself the day I left. I trained three horses that day. I trained Affection, I trained Sweeney, and I trained Chirahola. All three did a flat line. All three looked good. All three did their miles well. Still got to learn in the group, but very happy with what I saw from Sweeney. Third and sixth, didn't train him the other day. Jogged him. He will be castrated. His attitude really rubbed me the wrong way the last day we went with him and I just said no immediately jog him don't train him again castrate that horse uh time is on my side uh just what can I say about the horse I said it best the other day if you would have said to me okay 
can you just tell me what you want him to look like at Christmas time and, the, and we'll see what that's how I want him to look if you'd asked me at the sale just write down a few points you'd like to you'd like him to be able to cover this is what he looks like at Christmas he's hit it out of the park horse looks amazing uh, Union suit looks good continues to look good this one Jimmy's full brother Vaquero blue chip always looks good and looked good again the other day victory blue chip all the blue chips we had from the sale all of them are looking good Venice looks amazing also one of our best pacers right now and look very very good uh, watch your mouth looks good this is peanuts full brother training down well widespread panic I think this guy is gonna look amazing as we get closer to June very narrow up front he could get to a knee he could get to a shin he might touch behind but if he can find his way around his gate this is a strong animal really happy with him and winter bells just continues to do her work well we changed her gear a little bit she doesn't like the flip-flops she made a break on me two weeks ago and then I went hard with her the one day and come right back the next day with her in a set she looked very good in the mile you can tell down the lane she really trying to come forward she understands her work that's step one being able to do it well step two obviously those will come as she goes along but that work ethic and that understanding of her job is very important she does it all very well very happy with what I saw from her the other day well everybody I truly wish you all a Merry Christmas those are your yearlings that is 2023 right there we just talked about it right in front of us and I couldn't be happier nothing's ever going to be perfect but man it sure seems like we had a great 2022 and even went deeper for 2023 so fingers crossed as I said, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. We should have a lot of fun in 2023 together. Take care.